Hello Nerfers, I'm Jay. I have my Elite Alpha Trooper and today I'm going to show you how to do a Tiger Stripe camo paint job. This is going to be a pretty in-depth tutorial and I'm going to show you all you need to do. So the to dive right in, the first step is take apart the blaster and put all the screws in one location. I have a little cup here and I'm going to be putting all the screws and small parts in the cup. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera because that's pretty self-explanatory. If you don't know how to unscrew a Nerf gun, you probably shouldn't be painting it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do that right now and uh, show you what to do next. Okay, so I have all the screws out and the screws for the stock are in here and the rest of the screws are in here. Um, it is definitely a good idea to separate stuff. Um, and I just lost the... Uh, <laughs> the little catch for the uh, tactical rail, but I will retrieve that later. Um, just as a heads up, this is the uh, 5 kilogram spring from Orange Modworks, which is a beast in this thing. I'm super duper impressed. And so after you get all the screws out, uh, it's just a matter of prying it open. And if you need to use a screwdriver, go right ahead and do that. Just be gentle with it. You don't need to force anything. But if it doesn't pop out easily, you might end up breaking something, and that's never good. So, ta-da, there you go. You always catch more bees with honey than vinegar as it flies. I don't know the, the saying. But, um, so basically, now that you have the shell in pieces, I'm going to set this aside for the moment, and you're going to want to start taking everything out. You want to remove everything that is not going to be painted. So all this orange in here, I'm not going to be painting this. I'm going to be painting this and this. These are probably the only two pieces on the inside of the shell that I'm going to be painting. So you're going to want to remove, separate, mark, do whatever you can to sort out the pieces. And I'm going to be showing you how to put them back together because I've definitely got some complaints from people about that. I'm also going to be painting this. So I'll be setting that aside here. Um, so you're going to need a screwdriver to remove the screws from here and I'm going to be putting those in the cup over there so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the screws they're pretty tight and uh, the springs in here as well you're definitely going to want to put in the cup so you don't lose them or whatever you're using to separate the pieces out um, so I'm going to take everything out and show you what the empty shell looks like I'm probably going to be cleaning up all the grease because I'm going to be painting the inside of the shell too and I'll tell you why. Okay so I have everything removed and now um, I just wanted to make sure to get, let you guys know that um, let's see where is it this part right here is part of the uh, clip release system and you have to remove the spring from here and there's a little screw in there and that'll release the uh, clip release button on this side of the blaster and then if you flip over to the other side of the shell there will be another screw in here which you have to unscrew in, in order to get those out. Also, this little thing sits in here and um, basically you don't need it. it. It's basically the lock that uh, clicks into place when you half prime it so you can't, you know, just like, you know. But um, you don't need that lock so if you want to take that out you can. Um, it kind of sprung apart uh, so I'm probably not going to be able to put it back together. Um, and I don't really need to. I'm going to try and find the forward prime lock so I can lock it forward. Uh, but it, I don't think I need that either. But the next part is the part that everyone kind of thinks you don't need to do. Which you definitely do. And that's sanding. Uh, sanding is tedious. It is time consuming. But the results are so much better when you sand everything down. Um, you, you know, some spray paints may say for plastic. No sanding required, but that's a load of BS. You need to sand because otherwise it's just not going to be very receptive of the paint. Uh, so I'm going to sand everything off camera and show you what it looks like after it's done. And then we'll move out to my garage and we'll do some painting. Okay, so this is the last part that needs to be sanded, uh, the right side of the shell. And uh, everything else is in a box and ready to be moved out to the garage to, be, uh, to put a base coat on. So... We're going to head out to the garage and I'm going to show you what to do next. Alright guys, so to start off I'm going to be giving a Rust-Oleum Ultra Flat Camo Black uh, base coat. And I'm just going to be doing that for everything and I'm just going to start by um, by giving everything the insides of the, the shell 
a coating of it. So I'm going to do that real quick. And the reason I do that on the inside is, uh, well, there's some angles that you can't exactly reach from the outside. And when you're looking in at the blaster, like from the jam door, and on the outside it looks black, but on the inside it looks blue. It's just not, it doesn't, it, it doesn't look professional. I'm going to be doing it to these orange pieces as well. out of this can so I'm really glad that I went and got another one. Uh, the other colors that I got are the, for the blues, I got uh, Krylon Colormaster Peekaboo Blue, I know it sounds kind of cute, and then uh, Rust-Oleum Deep, Deep Blue and they're both gloss. And then for the finish I got Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and give everything a nice base coat and then we will move on to the next step which is getting a stencil for the tiger stripe. Okay guys, so I've applied the first layer of the base coat. Uh, I'm going to wait for everything to dry then come back and see if anything needs a touch up. I'll probably add another layer of uh, base coat to the, the shell and the pump grip. Everything else seems like it should be alright. Uh, then I will be adding the blues I've got the blues um so yeah uh, next we're going to be printing out a stencil from the internet and I will be posting a link to that stencil in the description below um and I'll be showing you what to do next okay guys for this next part you're gonna need a few things you're gonna need an internet connection which you should probably have if you're watching the video so that's a prerequisite um you should have a printer. It doesn't have to be color. It can be black and white. You need to find the stencil, which I will post a link to right below. Um, you need a cutting board, and I'm using an X-Acto knife, and the X-Acto knife works pretty well, and I'm going to be cutting out the black parts. So I'm going to do that off camera because it's tedious and it's a pain in the butt. So I will show you what the stencil looks like after it's done, and we will start painting with the stencil. Alright guys, so we're back out in the garage, and uh... I've got my stencil, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place the stencil on the blaster like this. So it's just resting on top of it, like so. And there's a few different ways you could do this. You could use, like, painter's tape and just cut out bits of stencil for that. But that's really up to you. It's up to your preference. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the darker blue, the deep blue gloss, and I'm just going to apply a layer of that right now. Alright, so let that just sit for a moment. And then I'm going to take this, and very gently, pick it up, and move it onto the barrel part here, and repeat the process. Now that looks cool already. Part of me would just want to leave it there, but there's a little too much black showing up. So I'm going to repeat the process over here. And remove it. Whoops. Very gently, remember. And that looks really awesome. I mean, I'll, all I have to do now is just add a little bit of the lighter blue. And then that'll be cool. So for the moment, I'm going to place the stencil down to dry a little bit. Because otherwise it gets really sticky. And I'm going to let that dry. I'm actually going to be using a heat gun to help that along a little bit. And then I will be applying the light blue coat, coat excuse me. Okay guys, so I suffered a minor setback. Uh, the 
the peekaboo blue from Krylon was more like a peekaboo I'm not a blue. Uh, it was white. So I went out and got this, which is uh, spa blue, rust-oleum gloss. And it's uh, very light blue, but it's much better, and it will work better for my purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my blaster, the shell, and fix everything up here. There we go. And then put on the second coat. Um, the difference is that when you put the stencil on, you want to offset it just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show you what it looks like. There's my stencil right over here. Now the stencil can get a little sticky and it can stick to things as well as um, parts of the stencil can stick to itself. So you want to use the stencil covering parts of the black as much as possible of the, well I mean you want to cover, excuse me, you want to cover some of the blue the dark blue because you definitely want there to be a, a difference in shading so I'm going to go ahead and spray that on and see what that looks like I definitely still want some black showing I don't want it all to be gone so spray that on And hopefully, it'll look good. Whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> I like it. And then we just do the same for over here. Just cover up as much of the blue as possible. And then... Ta-da. That's pretty neat. It's a little bit more white than I wanted it, but uh, it's looking pretty cool. If I have to, I'll add more dark blue, but I don't think I'll have to. I kind of like how it looks. The other problem I really encounter with these stencils is that they stick to your fingers. So you gotta be really careful. And uh, after a bunch of coats of paint on the stencils, it, it gets very difficult to use. So after each round, I usually like to give it a while to let everything dry out. I'm having some trouble. There we go. All right. That looks cool. I like that. I like it a lot. I think it's neat. All right, so I'm gonna go and do the rest off camera, and then show you what it looks like uh, once I put the clear coat on. And uh, then I'm gonna show you how to put all the internals back because I've gotten some uh, complaints about not showing that part in my videos. So I figured I'd do that for this uh, just to give you guys a little taste of it. Okay, guys. So we're on to the last step here of the painting process, which is one of the most important steps if you want your paint to last and that is the clear coat and I have matte clear rust-oleum here and I'm going to be spraying that on I'm go going to be doing two coats on everything but I'm definitely going to be laying it on thick around the handle and the pump grip area because that's where your hands are going to be touching most and your hands have a tendency to rub off the paint so I'm going to go ahead and do that now I'll, I'll start with part of the shell and uh, I'll do the rest off camera because uh, and it's going to take a long time. This is definitely going to come out nice. I'm really excited with how this looks. I thought there was going to be too much light blue, but I think it blends perfectly. And I think I'm going to be naming this one the Tiger Shark. So I'm probably going to be putting that on here somehow. I might be putting that on the pump grip um, with the light blue. But yeah, so I'm going to be clear coating this and I'm, I'm going to spray some light blue in a puddle and use a brush to put on Tiger Shark. So yeah.
and you really want to make sure that you get all angles. You don't just do it from you know one one side. You definitely want to get all angles. So I'm gonna do the rest off camera and uh, show you what it looks like once everything is painted, and I will show you how to put it back together. All right, guys. So I've got everything done as far as painting goes, and I'm I'm pretty impressed with how it came out. I I definitely like it. Um, so we're going to start putting things back together. So the first step that you want to do is you want to uh, put back your uh, trigger your not trigger excuse me your clip release buttons, and um, because of the layers of paint, it's going to put a lot of friction on the button itself. So what I did is before I put the button on, I added a little bit of silicone grease from Orange Mod Works. I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other side on, on the other half of the shell here. Just like a little dab and just, you know, spread it across there. And that just, oops, excuse me, that just gets rid of some of the friction. And um, let me see where the other part of it is. Uh, so you just put the button back on and it and it should slide much smoother so I'm gonna go ahead and screw that back in and then show you the next step okay guys so the next step is you want to start assembling the back part of the breech which is this part and this should be you know like this and you just want to put everything in where it goes and these running rails are where the breech should go and then the plunger tube should go on these running rails so and then if you, you know if you have any trouble finding those uh just look really hard um what i'm going to do, do though is i'm going to apply generous amounts of grease to the running rails since i painted over most of that part of the blaster so it could use a little extra lubrication and i will be repeating the process on the on the other side but for now that should be good for this side and the reason you want to put this in first is because this because of this metal rod here uh, that metal rod has a tendency to get in the way and it's very hard to maneuver into place with the um, with the front part of the breech in first so now that you have that in you can put in the back of the receiving part of the breech and I'm actually going to remove this part for a second to make it easier and it just slides into place put that in next but it just slides into place and it goes in these two little holes right here so then you have the uh, dart stopper the dart tooth it's called and I just lost the spring and I'm just gonna go grab that real quick okay so here's the dart tooth and the spring goes on like this and it goes right there and to hold that in place is this piece of plastic which goes right in there and screws on in that little screw post Ta-da! then you can put the grill part back on which is this and that should fit underneath there nicely Next, you want to slide the faux barrel into place, which might take a little bit of maneuvering with the grill on. So maybe we'll take the grill off again a little bit and then put it back into place. And that has two screws, and I'm keeping the tip orange for a very specific reason. The reason I'm keeping the tip orange is so if I want to use this outside since it's camouflage it has the potential to look like a real gun so in order to minimize the chance that the university police shoot me because it looks like I have an assault rifle um, I've kept the tip orange which is uh, the industry standard for uh, toy guns so yeah so I've removed all the locks from mine except the trigger catch. Um, so I'm going to see how it performs with things like that. The next thing you want to do is you want to put the uh, slam fire mechanism in place and it goes right in here and it's held in by I believe it's the silver screw which goes right over here. And I'll use a flathead to screw that in because it's got a lot of friction on it. 
and that screws in nicely and that shouldn't have any trouble moving around all right next thing you want to do is there's a spring for the catch here and that goes right there and then a spring for the trigger which goes on like this and because there's paint on the trigger it actually holds the spring on stronger than if there were no paint on the trigger so the trigger goes on right there and you need the black large Phillips head screw for that part and it seems to be moving okay so I'm not gonna put any grease on it I'm not too worried about it but if it's worrying you that there might be some problems with it um, then I'd suggest putting some grease on it but it seems to be sliding fine um, so yeah finally uh, what you want to put on is the trigger catch which is this piece right here and that goes right underneath the plunger rod and slots into place just like that. On the regular Alpha Trooper, the the trigger catch is a pain in the butt, and it doesn't want to stay in place. Same thing with like the long strike. The, the long strike is no notorious for that. Then, once you put everything back together, the last thing to go on is this end cap right here. So I'm gonna put everything together, screw everything in. You should know how to do that. If you don't, then there's a huge issue. Um, but uh, the only thing that I'm missing is the tactical rail catch, which I put right here. And that takes two seconds to put in place. So I'm going to put it together off camera and then uh, give you a little test firing and to let you know my thoughts on this blaster. I really am excited. Okay guys, so it's finished, and I'm very, very impressed with how it came out. I named it the Tiger Shark, because it's Tiger Stripe camo, but it's kind of a, a Navy-esque feel, so I figured I'd give it a, a water animal kind of name. And it, it primes nicely. I greased up all in here. I greased up the uh, clip release. I greased up the trigger, um, and all the internals are greased up, except the jam door. Uh, the jam door is actually very difficult to open. Which is good. And it's really awesome. I'm very, very impressed. This paint job is pretty easy for me to do. Uh, it just takes some time. And um, this is the Elite Alpha Trooper. And so now you know how to put it back together and you know how to paint a Tiger Shark camo. So this has been a uh, tutorial on how to paint Nerf guns or anything. You could apply this to other things as well, I'm sure. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe so I can continue to make more videos. If you want me to do something like this for you, you can commission me. You can shoot me a um, private message or a comment, and we'll get squared away with that. Um, I'm open for commission, so we, uh, I can work out prices and, and options and all that fun stuff. Um, Remember though, mod at your own risk. Modding can potentially damage the internals of the gun, so do so with that in mind. I am not responsible for you damaging your own blaster. <sighs> I've said that so many times. Um, if you want to yell at me anyways, that's okay. I understand you're angry and you want to blame someone. But do your research before you modify or before you take a gun apart, and if you can't put it back together, it's your own damn fault. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good night.